Welcome to Access Server 3.0. This version comes with a completely redesigned interface to make managing your VPN server smoother and more efficient. In this video, we'll walk you through the different sections of the new admin web UI. You can install Access Server on any officially supported Linux distribution. The status page is the first thing you'll see when you log into the admin web UI. It's your main dashboard, giving you a quick snapshot of your server's health, active connections, and licensing details. You'll see three main tabs here. Overview shows your server's status, connection summary and license info. Active connections lists all current VPN connections. You can filter, search, and sort to find specific users or sessions quickly. And activity log tracks events like connection attempts, successful logins, system errors, and more. You can search using keywords, filter by username, error type, IP, etc. Export the log as a CSV for review or archiving. This is a great spot for troubleshooting or auditing. VPN's server settings section is where you configure your network and security settings. You'll control how VPN clients connect, how IP addresses are assigned, and how traffic is encrypted. Inside this section, you'll find tabs for things like clustering, encryption policies, and advanced networking. In network settings, you have server address. This is the IP or FQDN clients use to connect. A fully qualified domain name is recommended. Interface defines the port where Access Server listens for VPN connections. If clients can't reach this, they won't be able to connect. OpenVPN daemons adjust the number and port of TCP UDP daemons as needed. Protocols choose between TCP or both TCP and UDP. Looking at subnets tab, we see default VPN client address pool. Here set the dynamic IP range for connecting clients. Static IP address pool, which is optional, define a range for assigning static IPs to users not in a specific group. Default group address pool, used when a group doesn't have its own dynamic pool. Use clustering and failover to set up high availability and scalability for your deployment. In security slash encryption tab, select the TLS version for the control channel. Set the data channel encryption cipher to define how traffic is encrypted. The server uses the first cipher that matches the client's supported list. Connection security refresh sets how often, in minutes, TLS sessions are renegotiated. Open VPN client certificate requirements. Toggle to allow server locked connection profiles. Open VPN data channel offloading, DCO. Improves performance by handling encryption in the kernel space. Now let's look at the advanced settings tab. Uh, here you can tweak lower level or optional settings for more complex network setups. You can allow users to connect from multiple devices, you can also set the MTU size for VPN traffic. You can enable compatibility for clients that don't advertise their Cypher support. And you can also manage Windows networking settings like NetBIOS over TCP IP. The users page gives you control over who can connect to your server. You can create, edit, and search for user accounts here. User settings are grouped into following sections. Permissions. Assigned to group. User role, admin or user. Allow auto login, on or off. Authentication method. Local, LDAP, Radius, SAML, etc. Require MFA or multi-factor authentication. In networking section you have IP addressing, static or dynamic. DMZ configuration which you can forward a port on the access server to this VPN client. VPN gateway which allows client to act as gateway. Access all server-side private subnets. Access all other VPN clients. Group and user access rules tab shows any user specific rules that override group level defaults. Use new access rule to define custom NAT, routing or restriction rules. Edit or delete existing rules as needed. In connection profiles tab, you can manage the connection profiles for each user. In intergroup connectivity tab, you can see the group roles that a user inherits. You can choose how different groups communicate with each other. Just pick from all two-way or one-way connectivity options. If no rules are set up yet, you'll see a message that says, no intergroup connectivity rules found. The groups page works just like the users page, but for managing user groups, you can create, edit, and view group settings here. Access controls allows you to control how users and groups access the network, the internet, and each other. This section is divided into five tabs, group and user access rules. Define what resources groups, users can access. Global access rules. This where you can set rules for all VPN users regardless of group. Define reachable subnets by choosing NATI or route. Looking at intergroup connectivity tab, you can manage how different groups can communicate. Internet access and DNS tab is where you can choose your internet gateway to be full tunnel, which all traffic goes through the VPN, or split tunnel. Only specified traffic goes through the VPN. Push DNS, which is recommended for full tunnel. 
You also have the option of selecting DNS servers from two options, AutoDetect, which will use server settings or custom. In InterClient Communication tab, you can control how connected VPN clients can interact with one another. You can isolate all users or allow user-to-user -user connections, or admins can access all users. And the last part here is access to internal gateway, which let clients reach services hosted on the access server. Next section is authentication. You can choose how users log in. This section includes five tabs. General settings, local, LDAP, radius, SAML. Access server supports six authentication types. Local, PAM, radius, LDAP, SAML, and PAS only. PAS only is for custom setups using post auth scripts. Look at web services. This is where you can configure how the admin and client web UIs are hosted. Admin web server tab is where you can manage interface bindings, ports, and protocols. And looking at client web server, you can set options for client access. In certificate management tab, you can manage the digital certificates used for secure communication. Three tabs here, web server certificate, VPN server certificate authority, VPN client certificates. And we have advanced settings. This is more for experienced admins. This section exposes low-level configuration settings useful for advanced setups and troubleshooting. On the activation page, you'll find details about your license key, connection usage, and subscription status. You can manage or update your subscription from here. And lastly, in the bottom left corner of the admin web UI, there's a menu just for admin users. It includes helpful links and quick access to account actions. For more help or in-depth tutorials, check out our documentation on the website under the resources section.